Hey, I'm Anna, and I have a crazy story to tell you. But before I do, please like and subscribe to MSA. I grew up in an orphanage, and ever since I was little, I was surrounded with people who loved me. They said I had the prettiest blue eyes, and my smile could brighten up a room. I'm sure you'll get adopted by someone amazing, and you'll live like a princess. I wish, but I don't want to leave you guys too. I loved my life there, but I wanted a real family too. My wish came true when I turned five, and a rich supermodel, Clara, adopted me. She traveled a lot for work and I became her favorite travel buddy. When I turned 16, I started a YouTube channel documenting all my travels and within two years, it had more than 20 million subscribers. Life was great, but then one day everything changed. I was in the cafeteria when my best friend Candace came running to me. We'd been friends ever since I got featured on her channel where she pranked people. You've got to see this, Anna. There's a girl who looks exactly like you. Candy, is this another one of your dumb pranks? I still haven't forgiven you for stuffing fake spiders in my locker. Girl, I'm not fooling around. Trust me. Now get up. Just then, a girl swooshed past the crowd and hugged me. And when I saw her face, I almost passed out. We were identical. Holy mother of toads. Told ya. It's really you? Anna. Yeah, but who the heck are you? And why do you look like me? The girl told me her name was Jamie, and she was my twin sister. My head spun in a thousand directions as I pulled her to the side to talk. Okay, tell me everything. My parents, our parents, parents are from Hawaii, and that's where I grew up. It's a beautiful place. You should visit. Oh, wait. I'm sure you've already been there since you've been everywhere. Get to the point, Jamie. Sorry. So, I didn't know I had a sister till I saw your videos. I am so happy to have found you. How are you so sure I'm your sister? Maybe we're just two people who look exactly like each other. When I saw you, I confronted our parents, and they told me that they gave you up because they couldn't afford two kids. That makes no sense. Listen, I get it. I look like a homeless person, and you're, well, a queen. I know it's difficult to trust me, but we can get a DNA test to confirm it. And we did take the test. When the results came out, I was shocked. She really was my sister. I was happy and hurt at the same time. The next few days, Jamie and I hung out a lot. She told me she was here on scholarship and was living in some shabby hostel. So I asked Clara if she could live with us. I don't know. I mean, please, please. You're so busy these days, and I could use some company. But you hardly know her. She is my sister. Clara eventually caved and Jamie moved in. We set up a room and stayed up all night talking. Slowly we got close and Jamie even helped me shoot my videos. One day we were shooting in the schoolyard when Liam, the hottest guy in school, walked up to me. Wow, and here I thought you couldn't look prettier. Yeah, says the guy who has the whole town drooling over his looks. Did you get a new haircut? She noticed. As Liam left, Jamie smirked at me. You totally like him. No, I don't. I mean, I mean, he's cute and all, but I don't know. We've been friends for so long. Okay, that was a total lie. I've had the biggest crush on Liam, but I wasn't sure if he liked me that way. So I kept my feelings to myself till I found a good time. The next few weeks, I took Jamie with me everywhere, and Candace wasn't too thrilled. She's always around. It's annoying. Give her some time. You'll warm up to her. Now let's get this video started. Our fans are waiting. Just then, Jamie walked in with drinks, tripped on the cords, and sent the soda splashing all over the computer screens. Get off me. You ruined everything. Do you know how much money went into the system? I'm sorry. Please don't be mad. I slipped. Just tell me what you want me to do. I'll get a job and replace all of this. Should I sell my phone? I'll even sell my hair. Oh, shoot. I Can I just... Jeez, Jamie, chill out. Accidents happen. Candy, I'll replace your stuff. Let's not make a big deal out of this. Candace left angrily and Jamie cried all day until I took her out for ice cream and she finally shut up. We even decided to stay home that weekend because Jamie was so bummed out. But then Liam invited me for a party and I couldn't say no. I asked Jamie to tag along and she reluctantly agreed. But my jaw dropped when I saw her dressed up. Wow, you look well like me. It's nice, right? I wanted to make an impression as your sister. Can't let your reputation stink just because I do. Don't say that. You look great. We were having a blast at the party and thankfully Candace was in a good mood and she and Jamie made up. I was getting some drinks when Liam tapped on my shoulder. I'm glad you showed up. How could I not? Not. It's your party. Listen, I've been wanting to tell you something, but I was waiting for the right time. I like you, Anna. Like, a lot. And something tells me you like me too. Liam, I... Anna, we have to... Oh my god, I'm interrupting something, right? I'm so stupid. Are you mad at me? I think you are. Maybe I should leave. Or, no, wait, I don't have a car or money for a cab. It's okay. I'll hitchhike with some stranger. Hopefully he won't be a kidnapper or a weirdo. Oh my god, Jamie. You know what? Let's just leave together. I'll talk to you in school, Liam. 
we left and I couldn't help feeling annoyed with Jamie. But when we reached home, Jamie's phone rang and she went to take the call. But when she came back, I could tell she was crying. What's wrong? Our parents want me to pull out of school and come back home immediately. You know, Anna, I've never had a friend because mom and dad just wouldn't let me leave the house. I hate them. They're crazy. It can't be that bad, Jamie. They chose you over me, so I guess they do love you. I just wish I could ask them why they had... That's it. We should switch places. You'll get your answers, and I'll get some time to think about how to convince them to let me stay here. Um, I don't think that's a very good idea. Sure it is. Aren't you even a little bit curious about them? I was curious about my parents, and maybe going as Jamie wasn't a bad idea, but I couldn't tell Clara. What if she didn't like the idea of me meeting my birth parents? And definitely not Candace, because she would just talk me out of it. We decided to do the switch over the weekend since Clara was out of town. Soon, I was on a plane to Hawaii, and when I reached Jamie's house, I kind of teared up seeing my birth parents, but they looked terrified. Quick, come inside. Now, before someone sees you. Hello? No, hi? How are you? Oh, I really hope no one saw you. Just go and clean up, and we'll talk. That was weird. I figured out which room was Jamie's and started to unpack. I was just wondering what to say to them when they walked in. Jamie, how are you? Are, are you okay? We wanted to talk to you about that money, but you're probably tired. Let's do it in the morning. Here's some food. With that, Mom put the plate on the floor and ran faster than a bullet. Jamie was right. These people were crazy. I wanted to confront them immediately, but I was too tired and fell asleep. But the next morning, I woke up to loud banging noises. We know she's in there. Open up. You can't hide her forever. What's happening, guys? You shouldn't have come back, Jamie. Why are you here? Stop yelling. And I'm not Jamie. I'm Anna. You know, the daughter you once had. What? Did you stop your medication again? Just go inside and let us handle these people. My birth parents went outside to calm the crowd. An hour later, we sat down and I told them everything about me being Anna, them being my real parents, the adoption, everything. They looked completely stunned. Anna, this is not true. It is true that Jamie's our daughter, but she's adopted. What do you mean? You're not my birth parents? No. We took Jamie in when she was just two, and the adoption agency did tell us she had a twin, but we could only adopt one kid, and she was really sick, so we decided to take her in. We loved her and did everything to make her happy, but she was always looking for more. She stole from us and borrowed from everyone in town and never paid anyone back. That explains all the angry people this morning. Yes, we had to sell whatever we had to pay them back, but it wasn't enough. When she told us she wanted to go to New York to study, we thought maybe she'd changed for the better. But now you're telling us she found you and she's in your home? She's not fine, Anna. You need to go back. Now. I immediately packed my stuff, but as luck would have it, Hawaii got hit by a hurricane. Thankfully, it was a small one, and flights were cleared to go after two days. I tried reaching out to Clara, but she was shooting in a remote location, and my calls weren't going through. Just then, I saw in my Insta stories that Candace was having a party, and Jamie was there too, so I headed there. But when I reached the party, my heart fell to my stomach, watching Liam making out with freaking Jamie. Get off him, you freak! Oh my god, you're back! I thought you were gone for good. What? Have you gone completely crazy, Jamie? I'm Anna! No, you're not! I am! Really? Then why are you dressed like that? Babe, make her leave, please. Candy, you know me! I'm Anna! Okay, Jamie, you need to leave before I call the cops. Anna told us how you stole from her and how she kicked you out. You can't make a fool out of me. Clearly not, since you're already acting like one. Candace pushed me away, and I was shocked beyond words. Crushed, I went home, only to find out that Jamie had told the guards not to allow me in my own house. This was officially the worst day of my life. Thankfully, I had my credit card, so I booked a hotel room. The next day in school, I was stunned to see that Jamie had taken over my life completely and had all my friends wrapped around her fingers. I had to do something to expose her before it got any worse. So I set my phone to record and waited until Jamie was alone. Do you really think you can pull this off? No one will believe you. Jamie, please, what do you want from me? Stop torturing me. She took the phone from my pocket and threw it away, breaking it to pieces. Don't act smart with me or I'll be your worst nightmare. Jamie smirked <laughs> and left. I had to outwit her. But how? No one believed me. I skipped school for the day and went back to the hotel. Just as I put my bag down, someone knocked on my door. Clara, Anna, thank God you're okay. I just landed and tried to call you, but I couldn't get through. Then I saw you'd used your credit card and booked a place here. I'm sorry, Mom. I should have listened to you and not trusted Jamie at all. 
Clara calmed me down and I told her everything. I thought she'd scold me, but instead she hugged me and took me home. She even told the guards not to allow Jamie in and informed Jamie's parents. Obviously, that didn't go down well with Jamie. What is happening? You! I did you a favor by not throwing you in jail for robbing me, but after this? What? You'll tell everyone that I'm you and you're me? You can fool my friends, but you cannot fool my mom or your own parents. Suddenly, Jamie saw her parents walk in and turned <gasps> white as a sheet. Is this some kind of joke? Who are these poor people? Get off me! Jamie, let's go home, honey. Enough of this. What home? This is my home. Listen, girl, you're not my daughter, so pack your stuff and leave, or I'll call the police. Jamie tried to protest, but she knew it was pointless. She left soon after, and I didn't press charges. I only wanted my life back, and jail time would have ruined Jamie's life. She was a witch, but she was still my sister. A week later, I went back to school, and Candace walked up to me. Babe, I'm so sorry. I should have known. It's cool. I just want to get past everything. Candace and Liam apologized, and a few months later, Liam and I started dating. He even joined me on my travel adventures, and things went back to normal. Or so I thought. A year later, I was in Italy with Liam for a shoot. It was pretty late when I got to the hotel, but as soon as I entered, I realized someone was in my room. My blood froze to see Jamie grinning at me. Uh, how, how did you get in? We're identical, remember? It wasn't difficult to get the master key from the manager. Tell me, are you enjoying living my life? What do you want? I want what's rightfully mine. I should have been the one adopted by a rich family, but instead, I got thrown into a dump while you're living like a princess. You have everything. The big house, the perfect mom, the golden boy. That's just not fair, is it? Jamie stared at me with murder in her eyes. I tried to say something, but words just fell out of my mind. Suddenly, I heard a huge crash, and Liam rushed in with the police. Are you okay, Anna? Liam told me how someone on the hotel staff had seen Jamie come in, and then I walked in five minutes later. They were confused and called me since you weren't answering. It wasn't hard to guess. It was Jamie. He's lying. I am Anna. Enough. Stay away from my guy and my life. I can't believe I ever called you my sister, you psycho. Rot in jail for a long, long time. The police took Jamie away, and I never saw her again. It took me a while to get over the episode, but with therapy and support from friends and family, I'm better and thriving. Hi, I'm Clarissa, and this is my story. Please like and subscribe. My twin sister Bella and I look identical in every way, right down to the dimple on our left cheeks, and I hate it. Anyone who thinks it's cool to be identical twins is stupid. Mom and Dad thought it was super cute to dress us up in matching outfits all the time, but growing up, it started getting so annoying. No one could tell us apart, not even our parents, so they just called us the twins or the girls. It's like I had no identity of my own. I was just part of a pair. Yeah, we got a lot of buy one get one free jokes too <laughs> also it was everyone's favorite game to try and spot any differences i think this one's shorter her nose is bigger right <laughs> her ears stick out more also if i pinch your cheek will your twin feel it if i punch your face will your mother feel it you're basically a part of her we were in the same class in school and we did all the same extracurricular activities and there was always so much pressure not to be the worst twin because everyone made that instant comparison clarissa got an a on her maths test. Why do you have a C, Bella? Bella beat you in that race by a mile, Clarissa. Aren't your legs just as long? Why was it so hard to understand that we didn't have matching abilities to go with our matching faces? But by fourth grade, our personalities started changing. I was academically stronger, but Bella was more athletic. We'd both been attending dance classes since we were kids, but I eventually dropped out because she was clearly better. I started slipping into the quiet nerd mold while she was more outgoing and loud. So she always got more attention. Like on our 10th birthday, Bella got her way and the whole party was Hannah Montana themed. All my Harry Potter requests were ignored. Mom had baked our birthday cake, and it read, Happy birthday to our beautiful beauty, Bella and Kla. Mom, what happened to my name? Bella told me she wanted this text on the cake, honey, and there just wasn't enough space left. Our classmates were gathered around Bella as they danced away to her playlist. I spotted a new kid sitting in a corner and playing some game. Hey, you think this party sucks as much as I do? Yeah, kinda. Sorry. Wanna play? I was having a really good time, till Bella and her friends started a crazy water fight and attacked us too. And they ruined the 
the boy's gaming console. He left the party crying and never talked to me again. Yeah, Bella always found a way to ruin things for me. Then one day in seventh grade, we found mom waiting for us at home with an envelope each. OMG, no way. You signed me up for the tween beauty pageant? Oh, thanks, mom. A flyer for the middle school mathletes? Well, what do you think? One for my beauty and one for my brainiac. It's perfect. It's fine, I guess. From then on, my sister got more and more popular, and I became more invisible. By the time we were in high school, Bella's pageant trophies were on full display all over the house, while my mathly trophies collected dust in my room. My parents clearly loved to show her off more. Well, at least my mathlete's teammate Eugene thought I was really cool. The way you gave that answer right before the buzzer went off? Ugh, what an adrenaline rush. You're so smart. You're too nice, Eugene. And you're like a 45-degree angle. You know, because... 45 degrees is an acute angle. You're a cutie? Aha, uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> Good one. So I was thinking, um, maybe you'd like to have my phone number? I was only half listening because just then, the football team captain Mika walked into the cafeteria. Man, he was some descendant of Hercules. Just sheer perfection. I'd never have the guts to say hi to him, and he'd never notice me. Clarissa? Yes, yes, sure. I'll take your phone number. So you'll call me then? If the need ever arises, then and definitely yes. Thanks, buddy. I gotta go to class now. Then one day, things took a bit of a turn when Bella came down with the flu. Oh, my head hurts and I have a fever. I can't perform at the mall pageant today. Oh, no, my poor baby. Go lie down and Clarissa will bring you some tea. She can make her own tea and I'm busy. She's unwell and you're not doing anything important. Now go. I was so sick of being second to my sister. But when I got back with the tea, I found her snoring. And then I got a crazy idea idea. Next to her bed was her pageant bag, all packed and ready to go. I grabbed it and snuck out the front door. I was just as beautiful as Bella, and I was gonna prove it. When I got to the mall, everyone was smiling and waving at me. I felt like a movie star. Her dress fit perfectly, and the show went super smoothly. And the winner is Bella. Just as I was accepting the trophy, I heard the most annoying voice in the world. She isn't Bella. I am. Mom couldn't find you at home, and when I saw my bag gone, I knew exactly exactly where you were. How dare you? So what? You're just mad that I could be as good as you any day. Shut up, loser. You mean winner? Bella leapt onto the stage and attacked me. The fight not only lost us the trophy, it also got us banned from all pageants in the area for life. Our parents were furious with me. I was grounded for two weeks, and Bella basically pretended I didn't exist after that. She even blocked me on all social media. But at school, it seemed like everyone had heard the pageant fight, and people were noticing me more. And I almost turned to jelly when Mika approached me. Hey, not Bella, right? Right. I'm, uh, what's my name? <laughs> I forgot. Clarissa. I'm Mika, the football captain. I loved that gutsy stunt you pulled at the mall yesterday. We're having cheer tryouts tomorrow. Why don't you come, too? Cheer tryouts? Uh, sure. I'll be there. Perfect. But, um, change your look or something. I want to be able to tell you apart from Bella, okay? Sure, Mika. I've wanted to change my look anyway. I was so excited for a fresh start. At home, I looked up some videos online on how to cut my hair. I decided bangs would be easiest. So I went to the bathroom, plugged in my dad's electric razor, and cut myself some bangs. And they turned out super cute. That was until they moved a bit, and I saw that I'd shaved off my eyebrows too. I was horrified. There was no way I could go to tryouts looking like that. I couldn't even leave the bathroom looking like this. I started rummaging through the cabinet to find something that could help fix my eyebrows. I found a bottle of spray on hair that my dad sometimes used to cover his bald spot. I aimed it at my forehead and sprayed, but it made me look like a caveman with a bushy unibrow. I scrubbed it off just as there was a knock at the door. Clarissa, are you in there? You better not be stealing my makeup again. Just washing my face, Mom. I'll be right out. Oh, I could use my mom's makeup to hide the damage. I found an eyebrow pencil and quickly scrawled them on as fast as I could. Then I brushed my bangs over my forehead and snuck quietly out of the bathroom. There you you are. Wait, did you just cut your hair? Some people are just desperate for attention. So pathetic. Just trying something different. Mom, I have to go run to the store and get some things for a school project, so bye! At the store, I was lucky enough to find the perfect solution. Tattoo sticker eyebrows. I rushed home with them and went to my room to try them on. Just put them on, spray a little water, and 
voila! I set the timer on the phone and laid back with the washcloth over my forehead, awaiting my beautiful new eyebrows. But when I looked at the results, I almost fainted. They looked super crooked. I scrubbed and I scrubbed, but they just wouldn't come off. I laid in my bed, sobbing uncontrollably. Why are you making sounds like a dying whale? OMG! <laughs> What happened to your face? I just wanted to change my look for the cheer tryouts, but it's all gone so horribly wrong. What am I gonna do? Well, maybe if you hadn't pretended to be me and ruined my pageant career. Wait, that's it. You can pretend to be me. Oh, please, Bella, I need this. Mika himself asked me. You know I've always had the biggest crush on him. Yeah, I've read your dear diary sob stories. What? Not important right now. And okay, since you're begging and you look so ugly, it's almost sad. I'll do it. But only if you do my homework for a whole year. Are you kidding? Ugh, fine. I'll do it. Just get me the cheerleading spot, okay? You got yourself a deal. A go. Mom let me stay at home for a few days when she saw what I'd done. Bella left for school the next morning. I didn't really trust her not to mess things up for me at the tryouts. I needed a spy, so I called Eugene. Hey, I know this is a lot to ask, but I'm really unwell. <coughs> and I asked my twin Bella to do the cheer tryouts for me. Could you just go and see how she does? I don't know who else I can trust. Of course I'll do it. Want me to drop by later with some soup too? We could watch some MSA videos, or I could show you my cat's pictures. That sounds amazing, but what I have is really contagious. <laughs> So you'll report to me soon, right? You betcha. You're the best, Eugene. Eugene's report tallied with what Bella told me. She'd performed a flawless audition, and I was in. I couldn't wait to go back and spend time with Mika. Thankfully, the tattoos wore off in a few days, and my eyebrows were coming back, so I could fill in the rest with pencil. I was ready to return to school, but that evening, Eugene told me that he'd seen Bella and Mika kissing, and when she got home that day, she was getting out of Mika's car. I ran down to the living room and opened the window to eavesdrop. Ugh, it's so hard to say goodbye to you, babe. It's only till tomorrow, coochie poochie poo. And that'll feel like an eternity, my Bella baby boo. Ew. And what the heck? The minute Bella walked in, I jumped in her way like an angry lioness. What in God's name did I just see? Oh, you mean me and Mika? <laughs> Silly, didn't you want to ask him out? I just did it for you. As you. No, don't lie to me, witch. I heard him say... Bella boo boo boo. He knows you're Bella and not me, Clarissa. And then her face turned totally evil. Yeah, okay, whatevs. I took a picture of you in your sleep and showed him your freaky eyebrows and told him you'd sent me in your place. We had a really good laugh and we just bonded. You took away my pageant life, I took away your guy. Trust me, he's way out of your league anyway. I let out a snarl and attacked her. My parents came running when we crashed into a table and pulled us apart. And I swore I'd never speak to her for the rest of my life. But watching her and Mika together in school and thinking of how they must have made fun of me made my heart burn. And then I found something in the mail one day that gave me the perfect opportunity for revenge. I knew I was successful when Bella screamed at me in the school hallway one day. Clarissa, what did you do? What are you talking about? Something boring, probably. Why do I have a rejection letter from the Dance Academy of my dreams, which says that my audition was way below their standards? I never went to any audition. Oh, yeah, that. See, I received the invitation for the audition, and I decided to go as you. Now, I haven't danced in a really long time, so I was kind of rusty. But I thought I did an impressive chicken dance. I will kill you! Well, that was effectively the end of our relationship. Somehow, it didn't feel as good as I thought it would. No one at home was talking to me now, and even Eugene seemed distant. Hey, am I imagining it, or are you avoiding me? No, Clarissa, you're not. I, I just don't like what you did to your sister. What? She started it. No, you started it when you went to the pageant as her. You don't really know everything about us, Eugene. It gets really tiring being overlooked and invisible. Actually, I do know something about that. I literally joined the mathletes to get close to you. I dropped every possible hint that I like you, and you're not so dumb that you didn't pick up on it, but you just used me when you needed me. And now you need me again because I'm guessing other people in your life aren't talking to you. Well, I have a little more self-respect than that. Goodbye, Clarissa. The last few months of high school were really lonely. Bella got into an amazing dance school across the country, but she still didn't seem willing to forgive me. And even though we hadn't gotten along in a really long time, I felt sad that she'd be out of my life soon. And you're taking my kidney. Say, you're my better half, Bella. Don't push it. Okay, okay. I know I haven't been very nice to you either, and I'm sorry too. I didn't even like Mika that much, so thank God he cheated on me and we broke up. Serves you right. Which reminds me, I gotta call Eugene before the surgery and apologize to him too. What kind of name is Eugene? That's Latin for ugly, girl. Well, Latin is a dead language, Bella. Much like your love life. <laughs> 
some things never change, do they? 